Hey, what is going on guys? Vex here, bringing another tutorial. So today I'm going to show you how to make cinematics in pretty much any game. Uh, the example I'll be using for this though is Modern Warfare Remastered. So this will run down the graphics settings you need, the resolutions, uh, bit rates, you know, how to set recordings, and the techniques you need to use. So in this tutorial I'll be showing you the method using a controller. Obviously with a game like Black Ops 3 with theater mode you can set up courses and dollies. But that's a whole other thing and most games don't have that so this is just a universal tutorial for any game so keep in mind you will need a controller. Now the first step is to set up your resolution. So within your game you need to set your resolution to something higher than what you want to have your cinematics at. So if we're trying to make 1080p 60fps cinematics then we'll need our resolution to be at least 1440p. That's because in most games you can't completely eliminate the HUD or any objects so you'll need to be cropping your image and you don't want to crop an image that's 1080p and then make it 1080p by zooming in because you'll lose a lot of quality, it'll be blurry and it's just a bad start so you want to have your cinematics as crisp as possible. Now if you don't have a monitor that's more than 1080p and you want 1080p cinematics then what you can do at least if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can go into the NVIDIA control panel and you can enable resolution scaling and that will allow you to run your games at a higher resolution than your monitor is and then you can also record at that higher resolution. So that's just a quick tip if you don't actually have a monitor with a higher resolution. Okay, so that's preparation now in the actual game. So first thing you want to do is go into your graphics settings and make sure that you've got all the graphics options to high or as high as you can as long as you're keeping 60 FPS. And then you can just check here that your resolution is correct. And then you want to go into the game setup. So within your game, with a private match, it'll obviously depend from game to game. You want to do one of two things. If you're trying to do first person cinematics as in on the ground, then you want to go into some sort of hardcore mode or HUD disabled mode. That way you can just show none of the HUD. You'll also want to be going into the options and disabling the time limit or the score limit just so to make sure that your game never ends and you have as much time as you need. This isn't going to work well if you're going to be in a rush and it is quite a lengthy process. Also, if you're doing first person cinematics, then you want to go to your options and then on your controls, turn your sensitivity right down. So this basically means doing it on the minimum sensitivity because we'll make sure cinematics are smooth and there's no judderiness or no speed. Because remember, cinematics are slow paced. You don't want a lot of fast paced, jerky movement. Also, if there's any uh, dead zone or dead area options, then make sure you turn all of them off as well. Okay, so now we're in the game, you can just pick either team. Make sure you pick one of your classes with a secondary grenade or a support grenade or something like that. Because usually with those, they don't have a fuse. And what this allows you to do in most games like Call of Duty and CSGO or Battlefield, you can hold these grenades out without them uh, exploding on you. And what this usually does is it moves your hands off the edge of the screen or just to the bottom of the screen or something like that. And what that allows you to do is just have basically no HUD, no hands and you can now do your first person cinematics. So obviously with a first person cinematic, you're not going to have any uh, Y axis movement, but you can still use X and Z. So you can still get some really great clips with that. So if we do something like this uh, dumpster here, and we can just move around really slowly. And you can see we can get a nice smooth motion here. And this can still look really good despite being at ground level. It's just, you know, and sometimes you do want these. Sometimes you need these uh, kind of height cinematics. You can also do something, uh, if we find another object here, you can focus in on a, a something when you're crouched. So you want to make something look big and, you know, looming and large. Like you want to make this building look really big. You can crouch down and do it from this height. And then that allows you to get a really nice perspective on the uh, building here. Also, if you've got some friends you want to do this with or they can help you, you can maybe do this sort of thing and then have a friend run past and you can get a really nice effect of some you know, running soldiers cinematics. And then after you've got some clips in an edit of them you know, running past you, then you can put that within your edit and then have the shots afterwards. So, you know, you can use these in edits. Uh, I won't go too much detail into that. So yeah, that's pretty much the basics of how to do first person cinematics, although personally I do prefer doing them in third person or spectator mode. But that said, one of the benefits of doing it this way is you don't have to do any cropping. So if you want to do 1080p cinematics, you can do 1080p resolution recordings. And that is a really uh, big plus side to doing them this way. And even in games like CSGO where you can still see your fingers at the bottom of the screen when holding a grenade out, you can't see much or it requires uh, very little cropping and you could probably get away with running at the same resolution as your renders. Now the other way to do these is by f with flying cinematics or you know fly through cinematics and this is done in the spectator mode. So for this you'll need to go to your game setup 
go to your options and then make sure that you've got your spectating mode enabled to free or third person or something like that and then this will just allow you to you know basically fly through the map you can also do this if you have no clip mode on some other games with the you know like CSGO you can do that but for most games some sort of spectator mode is the best way to go okay so once your game's loaded you want to make sure you go down and select spectator mode now as you can see there is still a HUD so this is what I was saying where you need to have a resolution more than you want your cinematics to be finally rendered at because obviously you have to crop out these uh, words. Uh, another tip, if you're on a television, you can actually go into the monitor boundaries and turn them right to the edge or actually past the edge of your monitor. And that will usually uh, put the text further into the edges and just mean you have to do a bit less cropping later. So we've got our controller on a low sensitivity. We're in spectator mode and you can see we can fly around here. But make sure you use both sticks. Pretty much all good cinematics require you to be moving around and then also looking around. So I'm not particularly good at this and it obviously takes some time to, you know, get it right. And so, you know, let's just do something like we want to have a cinematic of this bus. I'm not sure why we would. We might want to be moving to the left and then also moving around. So that's probably, you've got to get it right. You know, it takes several tries and then what you can do is once you've done it, you can, you know, assess which ones your better ones and, you know, which ones you like. And just basically do maybe five or six and then just pick whichever one you personally like the best. So this is just a standard kind of rotating around an object cinematic. And remember also if you think you've done it a bit too fast and you're rendering your edits in 30 FPS, you can always slow these down. So that's why it's good, uh, always good to capture at 60 FPS as you can slow your edits down later if you do need. Now you can also do something like you can maybe try moving up a bit. So if we have our stick here. It's a bit hard in this because we're kind of jumpy with the height, but if you're in something like no clip mode, then you can obviously adjust your height, uh, you know, as you go smoothly. So there's three axes, axes you need to think about. So there's X, Y, and Z, and a good cinematic will incorporate all of them into a nice smooth motion with no judderiness. And this does take some practice and, you know, it does take a bit of trial and error and, you know, you've got to be patient with it. So that's just some quick examples in uh, spectator mode. Okay, so now we, here we are in our editing software. I'm going to be using Sony Vegas for this example, but you can pretty much apply any of this sort of stuff to uh, Premiere or After Effects. So if we bring up our folder here and we just drag in our footage, and then you want to click No. And actually, while that's loading, I'll go up and show you my uh, properties. So because we're recorded at 1440p and we're going to be cropping our footage a bit, I've made it 1920 by 1080. Now, if you're going to be doing slow motions, and in most edits you'll want 30 FPS, but since I'm not going to be doing that yet, I'm just simply showing you how to render your cinematics, then you want 60. And then the other stuff, you can pretty much just leave the same. So also make sure you disable uh, motion blur. So just put that to disable resample. And then that's pretty much for your project settings, and make sure you click no in that window that popped up earlier. Okay, so now this is our footage. We need to find uh, some. So we've got some... Uh, here and then if we play this th forward okay so we've got some there uh, it's not perfect but you know you can go into that detail yourself but this is basically a clip of me doing one and then if we zoom in here so as you can see this is the third person or the spectator mode sorry where you've got your spectating at the top and your controls here so what we need to do right now is to zoom in now you can actually see that Vegas automatically crops this in. So right now this is actually downscaled. So we have um, more resol more pixels here than the actual document is laying. So don't think that you can actually lose quality when you zoom in. As long as you don't go too far, we won't because we've actually got extra here. So what you want to do is on your file, you want to click this uh, button here, the pan crop button. And then with your this box, what we can do is just drag this in until we see that the top and bottom of the box don't show any text. So if we do maybe there, and we can choose our arrow keys to move that up. And as you can see in the preview here, we don't have any text at the top or bottom. Now we can't be sure uh, what resolution this is technically running at right now. It could be slightly less than 1080p, uh, it could be slightly more. It's just not, you can't actually be sure the way Vegas scales your footage. 
but um, it should be good, and we're not losing too many pixels, and you know we can trust it as long as you're not zooming in super far. You won't have any problems, and most people won't notice anyway, especially at an edit with a lot of effects on it. So yeah, now basically all you have to do is render it and make sure you do in 1080p and 60fps. And yeah, that's pretty it for this tutorial. So hopefully this helped you guys. Uh, remember to leave a like if it did or any comments down below. That's always really appreciated. Uh, any questions you have, uh, just ask me and I'll try and get back to you. Uh, I don't always get back to you. So as usual, if you see someone with a problem or a question that you know the answer to, uh, please help them out. That's always really appreciated. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.